this is going to be a cool video. I got to admit. Uh, let's get into it. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, we're going to be talking about three Audio Technica condenser microphones, starting at our beginner to a semi pro microphone level. Now, the point of this video is to see how much of a difference that $100 to $300 range changes the quality of a microphone. Now, it could come down to quality, it could come down to the tone that you really like more. But we're, that's the point of this, and we're going to dive into some specs, some tech. But the first thing we're going to do is talk about the build. So the 2020 and the, the 2035 are basically rounder-shaped microphones. Obviously, all of them have a front-facing capsule. And the grill is very sturdy. They're all really nicely constructed and pretty much they're they're pretty durable when it comes to like using them obviously you shouldn't chuck them across the room but for the most part when you're holding them and if you're using them on a stand a shock mount a boom arm whatever it is they're pretty durable so you don't have to worry about it like being fragile in any way but the major difference is between the 20 series here you got the 2020 which has no switches it's just a straight up condenser microphone the 2035, on the other hand, has switches, the low cutoff, and a 10 dB pad. That low cutoff is at 80 hertz, so anything 80 and below, it starts to roll it off. The next thing is the similarity between the 2035 and the 4040 is the switches, of course. The same exact switches on the 4040. 80 hertz roll off on low cutoff, and a 10 dB pad as well. Now, some differences, the 20 series is obviously round and the 40 series is a little more tucked in. I prefer the 40 series look, but that's just my opinion. And of course, as I say always, never buy a microphone based on its looks, base it on how it sounds and what you're looking for with the tone. Next thing I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna throw up some graphics on the weight comparisons and the dimensions. I'm not gonna talk about it. I'm just gonna leave it up there. If you want anything specific, about these microphones as far as the builds are concerned or any questions you guys have you could either leave a question or comment down in the comment section you can go check out the individual videos where i go a little bit more in depth with them or you could hop in my stream every wednesday and saturday so just come in ask questions just hang out whatever it is but after that we're going to get into the tech and the specs and get into a section that i call techie talk Now for this version of Techie Talk, we're not gonna go crazy with it. We're just gonna point out the major differences. Obviously, like I said with the builds and the construction and the aesthetics, if you wanna know anything specific, comments or check out the individual videos. So the first thing that stands out is the sensitivity. The 2020 has a sensitivity of negative 37 decibels, 2035 at negative 33 and the 4040 at negative 32. So the 4040 and the 2035 are pretty comparable. The sensitivity on the 2020 is a little lower. So something to consider. Maybe that might help with the off-axis rejection. Maybe that might help with the sensitivity of noise or whatever it may be. We're going to do a silence test a little later after the frequency response. But keep that in mind. Put a little pin in it. And we'll talk about it afterwards. The next thing that stands out is the max SBL, which the sound pressure level. 2035 has 148 decibel sound pressure level. The 2020 at 144 and the 4040 at 145. Now on this one, these two, the 2020 and 4040, are more comparable, meaning that they can handle a little less. It's only three or four decibels, respectively, and probably not a big deal. I know these microphones can handle a good amount of input, so don't worry about it too much. But keep it in mind that the 2035 has a higher SPL, which could come into play if maybe you want to give it a little bit more oomph. But keep in mind that 10 dB pad will come into play if you are given a little bit more oomph. Uh, so the 4040 has it, 
2020 doesn't. So that's something to consider. Next up, let's talk about the dynamic range. And it makes sense for the dynamic range to be represented this way because the cheaper you get, the lower the dynamic range, which does not always represent a microphone. So the cheaper ones don't always have a lower dynamic range than the more expensive, but in this case, it does. So starting off with the 2020, it has a 124 decibel. The 2035 has 136 and the 4040 has 133. Now, like I said, it doesn't always mean that the dynamic range is higher with a higher budget microphone. As you can see, obviously the 2020 is much lower at 124, but the dynamic range on the 2035 is highest. And it's a matter of three decibels if you compare the 4040 and the 2035, so not a big deal, but it's just something to consider and something that you may want to keep in mind when you're deciding and this really comes into play when you're talking between these two meaning that can i save 150 dollars on a microphone and maybe get a better quality or a quality that's more for me that's something to consider so a lot of these tones and a lot of these things you're going to hear are going to be based on the booth test that we're going to have because a lot of times these microphones are going to be used in a booth a lot of people use the 2035 and the 2020 as uh, streaming mics or some microphone for a podcast and they're not necessarily in a booth but the 4040 has been known to be used in a booth so keep that in mind but we'll get into that when we get into the booth now the last thing with the specs that stands out for me is the signal to noise ratio this one's pretty easy because the signal to noise ratio for the 2020 is 74 and both the 2035 and the 4040 are at 82 decibels. So pretty hot on these and a little less hot on the 2020. Makes sense because of the price range. But again, these two, that's the major one. And if you really want a more in-depth analysis of it, this video is out. So just take a look at that one. But if you want to know just the tone and you just want to listen to them and you don't really care about like specifics, just continue listening and continue watching. You'll get all the uh, tonal examples that you need in a booth and untreated room and all that stuff. Now, lastly, in Techie Talk, frequency response curves. And this is going to be a very narrowed down version of it. I'm not going to go too crazy with it. I will put up the charts. I will let you know the major things, but I will not go too crazy with it. As I said before, individual videos and in the comments. You could always ask me questions or you could always check out the other videos where I go a little bit more in depth. So right off the bat, the major differences on the low end. Obviously, 80 hertz roll offs on the low cutoffs in the 4040 and the 2035. The 2020 does not have any switches, so no alterations. It's just a straight curve, no differences. Moving on to the mids, I almost prefer the 2035 because I like the smooth tone, but if you look on a chart, the 4040 has a better looking midsection, just by a little bit, not by much, but a little bit. The 2020, it's a little bumpy, but still pretty good. So if I was to rank them, they would be in order, meaning 2020, 2035, and then 4040. But that's based on the chart, not necessarily how the tone is. We're just looking. Now, finally, with the highs, you notice that the 4040 has a more drastic up and down, very tuned, and the 2020 and the 2035 are a little less crazy with the peaks and valleys, and they're more subtle, but depending on the tone you're looking for, the 4040 may be more applicable to what you're doing and maybe more applicable to your source, your voice, your whatever you're putting into it. All right, so we're done with the tech, we're done with the specs, we're done with the build. The couple of tests we're gonna do is a silence test with and without the low cutoffs on. So I'm gonna do a little bit of time with them and a little time without them. Then I'm gonna do off-axis test with and without the low cutoff. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so you may have noticed uh, people talking upstairs. You may have noticed the laundry going off and a dehumidifier going off. So all these things to consider uh, when you're in your room, wherever room you're in, you might have the same exact situation where you have people talking in other rooms or you have the laundry or whatever it is. Now let's turn on the low cutoffs and do the same exact test. Alright, so I'm on the 2035 side right now, and about like a foot away from the 2035, and then a little further away from the other ones. This is going to be your off-axis rejection test without the low cutoffs on the 2035 and the 4040. So let me know what you think on this, and see if you notice any major uh, reflections maybe off of maybe the masonite over there. Next up, off-axis rejection on the 2020 side. And this is going to be without any switches, obviously. And uh, there's a little less reflective surfaces on that wall, meaning over there. And maybe it might be off the posters, maybe. I'm not sure. You guys let me know. It's a very enclosed area, so you might not get any reflection, especially because there's so much stuff in the room. Uh, a lot of times putting stuff in the room really helps because it uh, bounces so in so many directions that it doesn't bounce directly back. Flat surfaces like tile or wood or uh, drywall, they're major reflective surfaces that really screw up audio. And lastly, we're 180 degrees from all the microphones behind the camera right now. And this is what you're going to hear with your off-axis rejection. I know the microphones are at an angle right now, but... I'm just going a little bit further towards the 2035 side. This is going to be the off-axis rejection for that. Moving back to the other side, and this is going to be the off-axis rejection closer to the 2020. And yeah, so this is what you're going to see with the off-axis rejection without the switches on. We're going to turn on the low cutoffs now and do it again. Back on the 2035 side, low cutoffs are on on the 2035 and the 4040. Obviously, the 2020 does not have any switches, so no low cutoff. It's just vanilla microphone, very standard condenser microphone. And this is what you're going to hear on this side, meaning stage right. Back on the 2020 side, this is what you're going to hear with the off-axis rejection. I'm about like a foot away from the 2020 right now, maybe a little more. And this is what you're going to hear with the low cutoffs on the 4040 and the 2035. They are rolling off at 80 hertz. And yeah, uh, you might notice a difference between the sides, but I notice, I know you'll notice a difference between the sides and the 180 degree test. So let's go to the 180 and see if you notice a difference between low cutoff on and low cutoff off. And finally, off axis rejection with the low cutoffs on the 4040 and the 2035. I'm going back and forth. I'm on the 2035 side right now, uh, giving a little more accurate 180 degree test because I put them a little off axis to avoid plosives. Yes, sure, I have my uh, pop filter there, but nice to practice good audio. And then on the 2020 side, this is gonna be your off axis rejection. Keep all these things in mind, and uh, yeah, that's it for the studio. Let's head to the booth. Okay, so we're in the booth right now, and we have all three of these microphones ready to go. Uh, so right now I'm listening to the AT2020, and uh, it's, to be honest, the lesser of the three. And it, you hear it. You hear the, the differences and the tone of it being... Uh, I don't want to say bad i just want to say lesser of the three it's just the way it is i mean it's a lesser microphone uh but now i'm going to switch over to the 2035 and let's see how that sounds so now we're listening to the 2035 i'll set this up over here so it's a little more in line with that and i'm a little more this is the good reference like that distance roughly the whole hang loose thing all right so now we're on the 4040 and obviously you hear that 
low ends like in there and I'm obviously not that much further away that or not that much closer than I was to the 2035 and you hear it you hear those tones of the lower bassiness and if I was to go back to the 2035 now you're probably not going to notice as much of a lower like throaty kind of low end if that makes sense to you back to the 4040 you are noticing that it has that bassy kind of forward kind of tone and uh, what we're going to do in the booth here is we're going to do a plosive test to start out because it's just easier to do plosive tests so to start off let's go to the AT2020 and do a plosive test Twenty thirty five. All right. There's your plosive test. Any of your P's, your any your B's, anything that bursts out air is going to be a plosive. So, in my opinion, the forty forty does handle it a little bit better than the rest. All right. The next thing we're going to do is a proximity effect to emphasize those low ends those base bassy notes and uh basically just show you how these microphones react to a closer performance first off the 2020 here's your low uh end here and your proximity effect a little closer and uh, you're noticing that the low ends are more emphasized because you're closer to the microphone do you go a little further away you're going to have more airy, like higher ends be more emphasized. And then it's a little bit lower. Get that like Barry White sexy voice. Now to the 2035 without the low cutoff on. And this is what you're going to hear with the proximity effect. And if I move a little bit further away, you get a little more airy tone. And a little bit closer, you got your proximity effect. This is what it is. And now to the 4040. All right, we're on the 4040 now. And this is going to be your proximity effect with uh, just a bassier tone because I'm closer. I move further away and you got more of an airier tone, more high ends, more treble, and then I go a little bit closer. The thing that I'm noticing with these proximity effects is the 2020 is more sensitive to bassy tones. Uh, I noticed because I'm looking at the levels and it spiked a lot higher than the other ones uh, when I did this proximity effect. So the next thing we're going to do we're going to engage the low cutoffs. Back on the 2020, no low cutoff because it doesn't have it. A little further away, and this is what it is. And a little closer. I feel like one of those like birds that on a desk that dips its beak into the water. All right, the 2035. Always a weird number. I don't. It just doesn't. It doesn't roll off the tongue. And this is what you're gonna hear compared to the other one, which had a flat curve as opposed to a roll-off so i notice it right away i mean it's obvious that the roll-off is happening you don't notice like a real rumble like like really gravelly like it would really be rumbling right now and if i go a little bit further away this switch your hand here without the rumble and then going a little bit further so if you're looking for a performance that's close up with a close proximity effect but you don't necessarily like the gravelly kind of kind of noise then this would be for you now to the 4040 which has naturally the most emphasized low end but now we took off 80 hertz up till 80 hertz it starts to roll off so this is what you're going to hear and then we go a little further away like the bird in the cup of water and then we go a little bit closer and you notice it's not as gravelly and not so Geralt of Rivia-esque all right so that was our booth test, and to be honest, I feel that in in this application, between the AT2020 and the AT2035, it's a matter of this one, the 2035 sounds more smooth. And for the extra 50 bucks, it's worth it. And like I said in a bunch of videos before, I got it on sale and I got it less than a new 2020. So if you look out there and you find something in good condition and at a decent price, I would highly recommend going with that instead. The 2020 is definitely a great option. And you could also find it used for less than $100. And 
fairly priced at like maybe even 60 or 75 depending on who you find it from or the condition that it's in be very careful with that because it could be in bad condition uh, but then when it comes down to tone which that comes down to these two the 4040 and the 2035 I feel that that it's not a matter of uh, which one's better I feel like it's a matter of which sound you're looking for and of course yes the 4040 is double the price but naturally it it has that lower end and if you're looking for that like if you're someone who's I, I mentioned this before uh, the 4040 is very popular within R&B hip hop rap and uh, you notice that a lot of people that have em- want to emphasize that lower voice or that uh, lower tone in their voice in that or if they're lacking in it maybe this emphasizes it a little bit more in something you're lacking just it depends on the application that you want to go for but i feel like these two are more so different microphones than an upgrade to another like instead of this being an upgrade from this it's more so they're more so on a fair plane like a level playing field and it's a matter of tone that you're looking for i i that's just my opinion but i mean you let me know down in the comments what you think if it's a matter of quality being better or is it a matter of uh, tone that you're looking for and it just so happens that this is more expensive all right so now to the untreated room where we can test out these things and see how they react to a room that's not so nice with the acoustics okay so it's a little crowded right here uh, it's not easy to put these things up on a mount with uh, the, all their shock mounts on uh, I wish this thing was a little bit wider but that's okay. I'm considering getting something a little different, uh, maybe a little bigger, but we'll see what happens. I don't know what's out there. I like looking at weird configurations of uh, mounts and things like that. Everyone loves a good mounting. Yes. Uh, <laughs> could have passed that one up. I'm sorry. And uh, this is what you're going to hear in an untreated room. I've said it a lot in other videos, but if you're new here and it's this is the video that you're first seeing, welcome. I really appreciate you checking this out. This room is about 10 by 10, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. Drywall, wood floors, and 8-foot ceiling. There is an area rug underneath me, which makes a big difference when it comes to reflections off the walls and the ceilings. Usually, if you have a reflective wall and the adjacent wall is treated or softer, it's not as bad of a, like an echo room. If it was just a straight drywall, you notice all the echoes and you notice every bit of uh, reflection. So keep that in mind. Putting stuff in a room usually helps and just stuff really is the big thing. Soft stuff especially and that rug is a cheap and very effective addition to a untreated room if you have it like your bedroom or maybe your office or whatever room you're using for this uh type of setup of course you're not going to be having this kind of setup because there's no reason to have all three of them for some reason i'm just a crazy person who has all three let's get into some off-axis tests now all right stage right on the 4040 side and this is what you're going to hear about like two three feet away from the microphones untreated room drywall eight foot ceilings about 10 by 10 roughly i ain't break out a ruler for you guys so i'm just guessing this is my old bedroom so there you go there's an area rug underneath as well so all these things keep in mind stage right or stage left oh my god i can't get that right i was never an actor in high school or college uh the only acting I've done is I was a sh extra and I was a uh, shopkeep in a in a feature film for a friend uh, had like two minutes on screen. So that was kind of cool. Uh, so this is your off axis rejection for the 2020 to 2035 and the 4040 in an untreated room reflections probably off that glass off the ceiling but there is an area rug underneath as I keep pointing out it makes a big difference and it's not that expensive so keep this in mind and this is what it's going to sound like let's go to 180 degrees and see if you notice a difference last but certainly not least here is your 180 degree test behind all three of these microphones in my opinion I think these three are probably the three most popular 
uh, Audio Technica microphones on the market today. I think if you were to add another one to the mix, uh, uh, the uh, I can't remember the model number, but their small diaphragm condenser microphone is very popular uh, amongst um, people who do audio like me. Uh, I landed on the Octava because I like the sound better, but the Audio Technica is nice. I just feel like it had a little bit too much low end on there, but that's just my opinion. Uh, I highly recommend go checking out uh, Curtis Judd's video. And of course, me recommending a video with off axis rejection is kind of silly because you could barely hear me, but I'm sure you could hear me a little bit. All right, so just to reiterate, Curtis Judd uh, covered a bunch of small diaphragm condenser microphones. Highly recommend that. I'll put it up in the corner. Uh, what corner is that? I think it's this one. I might be right, I might be wrong. And that is it. There is three Audio Technica microphones on the very, very low budget and the semi-pro with the AT4040 as you see here. And as I said in the video, the AT2020 is definitely a beginner microphone for people who are just starting out, trying to learn how to use an XLR mic and really just get their feet wet. The 2035 and the 4040, despite the fact that the 4040 is double the price, I feel that it's a different microphone. It's not necessarily a microphone that's better. I, I feel that it's better in tone. Personally, I, I enjoy it a little bit more. I like that low end presence and the high ends, despite the frequency response curve being very, very tuned and very exact and precise. I don't think it takes away from anything and I don't think it uh, bothers me in any way. It's not harsh to the ears or whatever. The 2035, on the other hand, it's a great microphone, has those options for the pad and the low cutoff. So if you are on a budget and you want a microphone, not necessarily this tone of the 4040, but has the infrastructure with the switches on the back, and you can make up for it in post and give those tones uh, some emphasis on your EQ or whatever you're looking for. So my final thoughts, AT4040 is my choice and it's not a choice because, oh, I spent $300 on a microphone and you're just saying it because you spent it. No, uh, the 2035 is definitely a close second and I am giving it a lot more credit than I originally thought it would get, and I was completely wrong about it. I thought it was just $50 more to just pay for some switches. No, it's actually a good microphone with some nice tones, very smooth, and it's got some nice rejection of noise, and it, it's just an overall great microphone. So that all being said, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please hit the like button, and consider subscribing for more videos that are coming out in the future. Uh, it's going to be slowing down a little bit uh, with my videos. I'm going to try to get two videos up a week now and uh, try not to stretch myself too thin because life is starting to get back to normal. I'm in the process of getting vaccinated. Just got the first one. Going to get the second one soon. And uh, work and everything going to start up again. But I'm going to try my best to get two videos out a week. And then eventually when I get a full time job, it will probably just come down to one, maybe two, depending on how busy I am. And of course, if you have any questions, comments down in the comment section. And if you want to catch my stream every Wednesday and Saturday, I know I said I was going to Twitch, but I just I did a couple weeks on Twitch back on Twitch and I just, no one was showing up. So if I'm going to have no one show up, might as well put it on YouTube and see if anyone from this community will show up. And if you want to just ask questions, hang out, listen to music, I play video games, just hang out. So it's a fun time and uh, it'd be nice to have some people show up and we'll have a conversation and just chat. That's all. And until next time, be safe, be kind, and I'll see you in the next video. She's not all looks. She's Thinker too. Sexy thing.